So Siberia OS. Now this particular ROM has a lot of history on this particular channel, especially when you connect it with the Redmi K20 Pro that is the rough file and also known as the Mi 90 Pro. Now today though we are talking about a different device. We are talking about the Poco X3 Pro and the most common question that I get for this particular device is which is the best gaming ROM, which is the best gaming kernel for this particular ROM and we in our elite testers group in which I have me and 10 to 12 other people, we have a habit of you know testing different things like which game is working, how, in which particular ROM and that is the reason we are able to bring amazing content like this. Now as you read in the title, this is a gaming beast for sure. Now the good thing about Siberia OS is it is based on Android 11. So it not only is good for gaming, it is you know good for daily use as well. So in today's review of Siberia OS version 4.9, unofficial for the Poco X3 Pro, we are going to check out all the benchmarks, the gaming performance and all the other things. So before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because hey, it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now, if you want to have fun and chat with like-minded people who have similar devices, join us on Telegram where we have more than 1,000 or 1,500 people chatting with each other each and every day. You might get some help over there as well. And you can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so right off the bat, this is an unofficial build and it has been recommended to me by Wolf. You would see him in the chat section a lot of times and he tests a lot of ROMs for me for the Poco X3 Pro. He plays a lot of BGMI as well, so you should take his recommendation seriously if you want to game well because he tests almost each and every custom ROM or MIA based ROM. So let's talk about Siberia OS and don't look at this video from a gaming point of view. Look at it from a point of view wherein you're getting a ROM which will allow you to not only use it as a daily driver but also game on it. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. Now this is by this particular maintainer and this is for the Poco X3 Pro. It works on the Vayu and Dima, both the devices. Android version is Android 11, updated on the 8th of November 2021. So it's a recent build. Now, you can donate to the dev and I would recommend you to do so because they are making wonderful ROMs for us free of cost. Now, the change log says November security patch, drop MSM IRQ balance, remove pixel thermal, switch to PELT 16 millisecond on, yeah, I don't know what that means. It's something related to the kernel, power hint, power hint, raise GPU minimum maximum frequency to 675, change four guard, power hint, remove Google specific audio and camera hints. This is based on OSS. It does not include G apps. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to make an install video. I will go ahead and do so. SE Linux is enforcing safety net should pass. If not, use this guide. Do not PM the dev report the bug on this particular group. Right now, a quick disclaimer over here: the group associated with this particular build is not in English. I tried to get some help there, but nobody replied. So you can maybe reply to the comment section or join our Telegram group for. Any questions that you have about this particular version of Siberia OS? Now, the moment you get into this particular ROM, you will see that you have the usual Siberia OS build. And the reason I have the FPS meter over here is because I couldn't find a FPS toggle. Yeah, FPS toggle is not there. So it's by default in uh, the maximum refresh rate is 120 and the minimum is 60. So it is in dynamic mode. I have only seen it switch between 60 and 120. I've not seen 90. Very rarely does it show 90. Anyways, the moment you boot into the ROM, you will see that you have a very, very pure and clean Android 11 based user interface with a beautiful Siberia wallpaper. Now, from the top to bottom, you have the quick tiles in which you have a ton of options, including heads up and screen recording. So the moment you click on screen record, you have a lot of options. You can record internal and external audio, show touches on screen, show stop dot, low quality for smaller file size, bigger file size limit that is up to 15 GB. So yeah, let's enable the screen recorder. Remember in Android 12 ROMs, Poco X3 Pros are having stutter issues while recording screen. So let's see over here. This is really smooth. I'll tell you this, for Poco X3 Pro period, you know, this is, this is one of the smoothest ROMs that I've used. Although this is not the latest Android 12, it is Android 11, but if it gives you superb smoothness and stability, nothing like it. Let's go ahead and stop the screen recording over here. Okay. And let's say go to gallery. Do they have a gallery? Yeah, they have a gallery application. This is the screen recording here. There you go. 
The screen recording is butter smooth. No stutter, no performance drops whatsoever. So it works absolutely fine. No problem there. Even the app icon animations are really, really beautiful on this particular ROM, as you can see. And uh, yeah, the smile on my face, the reason you see that is because the smoothness and the quickness of this ROM is brilliant. It's just brilliant, right? So you have heads up notification, screencast, and in additional quick tiles, you do have a ton of options over here. If I were to cover everything, it will take a while, but you do have caffeine and weather and all the other things which would be sort of useful in the quick tiles. So you can go ahead and enable that. The Google feed, as I said, works butter smooth, no problem whatsoever. And if you talk about the launcher over here, so if you go to home settings and uh, yeah, you sort of get a different launcher over here. I don't know what launcher they are running, but it's definitely not the Pixel launcher. You do have some customization available over here. You do have your usual Android 11 widgets available over here. So you can go ahead and use any one of those if you like. And then you have styles and wallpapers in which you have style, grid, clock. You can have a lot of customization. This is nothing like Monet UI. This is your good old school Android 11 customization and it works absolutely fine. 60 hertz, yeah, some applications. Anyways, if you talk about the app drawer, you don't really have a lot of bloatware, very, very few applications. So the ROM boots with very minimal bloatware. I don't see, yeah, you have a camera application, which is again, very basic. So you can probably choose to install a good port of Gcam and uh, you know, that should work absolutely fine for you. Now let's actually move to settings over here. So the moment you go to settings, you do have your usual Android 11 things. You know, I, I don't, I don't feel it is worth to cover everything. Once it has been explained in a lot of videos, you do have beautiful animations though for, you know, sub settings as well, your beautiful animations. But what happens is the moment you go to Siberia settings, you see a lot of options. This is not like Siberia Android 12 because that is an initial build and that is still in the early stages, but this is matured Android 11 and it gives you a ton of control over the user interface, which is really, really good. Now, what makes this ROM stand apart from me is you can use it as a daily driver and you can have great performance, great smoothness and a ton of customization options. You don't really see a lot of ROMs doing that with this rock solid stability, right? Now let's go to system over here. You have general tweaks. So we're going to go quickly over here because it will make the video extremely long and that's not the plan. So you have general tweaks, sensor block per package, buttons, notifications, dialer, and then you have panels in which you have status bar customization. So under status bar, you can go ahead and enable the battery percentage. I do see that the battery is low. You can make changes to the navigation bar and then you have the lock screen customization. I mean, just look at the amount of customization the ROM has to offer in Android 11. It's, it's really amazing. So in gestures as well, you have all these features there you go you do have swipe to screenshot along with long screenshot as well that is brilliant right now the good thing here is the gaming mode it is going to be a point of highlight in this particular video because of course i've said that this is a gaming rom for the poco x3 pro so you have enable gaming mode dynamic mode disable automatic brightness you can show fps info show menu overlay you have notification danmaku in which you can get your notifications like sort of translucent notifications which don't get in the way of your gameplay and you will still not miss your notifications so that is a good thing you can enable that you can choose the quick start apps now this is like the smart toolbox from xiaomi although a simplified asp version for this right now moving on you have use game driver performance tuning disable notification alert no ringing answering calls automatically disable gestures and you see that all the benchmark uh, applications have gone ahead and you know enabled this so the gaming mode is very very comprehensive and it works really really well along with the screen recorder so if you are a esports gamer or somebody who is a upcoming youtuber who wants to upload their content using the poco x3 pro you can definitely go ahead and use this rom it'll, it'll be amazing to you guys you do have ui settings in which you have animations and screen off animation ui background blur so yeah the blur is working already and all the other options which are present and they're working absolutely fine. Now you do have ambient display and I would not recommend you to use it always on because it will drain your battery. This is a LCD panel and we are coming towards the end of the Siberia customization, right? Now, apart from this under display, you do have some advanced options like, you know, color calibration and stuff like that. So, you know, as I said, it doesn't really make sense for me to cover the basic Android features every now and then. So if you actually go to about, and you go to the Android version, you have your Android 11 Easter egg over here, security patches November, the kernel is the 
Avery Ch- yeah i don't know i i am not able to pronounce that but you do have a custom kernel over here and the latest security patch so let's see once again if you go to android version yeah you have the november security patch so security is definitely taken care of if you go to the security sub menu you do have screen lock face unlock and everything is working absolutely fine another neat addition is you have a built in app locker which allows you to use fingerprint so that's really really good and moving on if you go to system you do have the option of gestures over here so some gestures and system navigation so you know everything probably everything that you would ever ask from a custom rom you have that available in siberia os now let's talk about the important aspects over here right for example let's go to the play store mm -hmm. and let's go to settings over here let's go to about the device is certified so safety net is passing out of the box and if we talk about DRM info, wide band level is working great as well. Now let's talk about the benchmark numbers because I did say that I played 90 FPS BGMI, I played new state and it worked absolutely fine. So in terms of gaming, if you want to use Siberia OS, be my guest, go ahead and give this version a try. If you want, I'll make an install video as well. Let me know in the comment section, right? So let's talk about the CPU throttle test first. So let's go to gallery over here and let's say go to screenshots cpu throttle to 91 percent of its max performance average performance was 183 122 gips so that's a decent score if you talk about geekbench over here 789 single core 2658 multi-core very rock solid score and if we talk about antutu over here don't be surprised 598,723. So this is very close to 600,000. So all in all, even in benchmark numbers, it shows that it is giving us great performance. The battery life on this ROM is rock solid. Even in standby, the battery life is pretty decent. So let's go here. And yes, you also have thermal profiles, but you don't have the 180 Hertz touch sampling rate. So if you go to battery usage over here, you will see that seven hours back, I unplugged it, although I was not at 100%. And, uh, you know, I've been using the device since then and the battery is still at 26%. So fast charging on this ROM is working absolutely fine. Safety net is passing. DRM info says L1 is working. It's very good for gaming and it looks and works very, very smooth as well. So Siberia is 4.9 unofficial in my opinion should be an official ROM because it's doing a great job. And I have high expectations from this ROM when it comes to Android 12. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at Phonox. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.